Thank you guys for watching. Today we are going to discuss story of Idi Amin and his favorite meal. Kindly remember to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Idi Amin food preferences were deeply rooted in traditional Uganda cuisine with a strong emphasis on meats, starches, tables. One of his favorite meals was roasted goat. <coughs> Hadis he enjoyed immensely. The preparation of this dish was elaborate and symbolic, often involving the entire animal being stuffed with rice, potatoes, carrots, parsley, and peas, and served standing with the bead retouched. This grand presentation was not only a testament to the culinary skills of the chief, his chefs, but also deeply display a main desire for grandeur. Amin also had a fondness for cassava, banana, stable food in Uganda, which are the main stable food in Uganda. Even during his exile in Saudi Arabia, he made sure to have these items saved from his hometown in Uganda. In a rare interview with Guardian before his death, Amin reminisces about how, how he would go to pick this beloved ingredient himself, highlighting his deep connection to his root despite his forced displacement. God meat was another favorite and a means often indulged in goat dishes prepared in various ways. And his enjoyment of goat meat was so profound that it became a symbol of his culinary identity. Additionally, Amin was known to go on hunting trip where he would shoot buffaloes from helicopter, releasing the thrill of the hunt and taste of the of their meat. This hunting excursion was more than just a means to procure food. They were expression of his power and dominance, the low chef and the professional pride. One of the most notable figures in Amin culinary world was Odera, a low chef from Kenya who became an integral part of the presidential compound. Odera was not just a, any chef, he was a professional who took immense pride in his craft. His expertise and a dedication to cooking elevated him to the position of a main personal chef, a role that came with both prestige and peril. Odera's signature dish, whole roasted gold stuffed with rice, vegetables, was a masterpiece that earned him recognition and respect. This dish was not merely about feeding the dictator, it was about creating an experience that much a means larger than life persona. Odera's culinary skills were so highly regarded that he was inherited along with the presidential compound, becoming a living part of Amin household. The role of Odera and other professional chefs in Amin regime went beyond cooking. They were tasked with managing the dictator's temper through the culinary creation. Odera, much like Hussein, Abu Ali, and Oksa, and Mr. K, understood the stake involved in their work. This chef took pride in the ability to influence a means food, a means mood, sorry, through food, often claiming that they saved life by keeping him content and jovial. Mr. K, for instance, bragged about his ability to improve a means temper, turning potentially dangerous situations into moments of levity through power of well prepared meal. Life in exile and culinary adaption. When in exile, a mean love for his favorite food did not wane. Residing in Saudi Arabia, he made a significant effort to maintain his connection to Uganda cuisine. In exile, he presented challenges in sourcing traditional ingredients, but Amin was resourceful. He had arranged for cassava, bananas to be sent from his hometown of Koboko, ensuring that his meals retain a taste of home. In Saudi Arabia, Amin diet included goat meat, which he continued to enjoy with some enthusiasm as he did back in Uganda. He also went fishing in the Red Sea during his free time. He also enjoyed fish as another new meal. I mean, I mean availability of goat in the Middle East made it even easier for I mean, to indulge in this preference. However, the experience of eating these meals in a foreign land was undoubtedly different from the communal and cultural contents of Uganda. I mean, exile meals also reflected a blend of Uganda and Middle Eastern influences. While the remain loyal to his favorite dishes, his culinary environment of Saudi Arabia introduced flavors and techniques. 
This fusion of cuisine added a layer of complexity to its meals, making them a unique presentation of its displaced identity. Dichotomy of professional and coerced chef. The chef who took part in a means can be a mean cooking procedure can be categorized into two distinct groups, the professional and those who are coerced into the role. Professional chefs like Odera, Abu Ali, and Mr. Quere, chosen for the exceptional skills and took pride in their work. This chef saw their role as more than just a job. It was a craft, a means of surviving in a volatile environment. Kudera pride in his, in his role, roasted, which include roasted goat, this exemplified this professional ethos. Despite the dangers of working for a dictator, this chef found a sense of accomplishment in their ability to create culinary masterpiece that pleased them in. Their pride was also intertwined with understanding their work the trend in their work will influence the dictator's mood and extension, the safety of those around him. On the other hand, some individuals were thrust into the role of chef without formal training or desire. These individuals were often bundled into an official car and to, told to prepare a specific meal with little regard for their professional aspiration and safety. Unlike professional chefs, this coerced chef saw their role as a means of survival, often living in constant fear of making a mistake that could cost them their lives. The role of food in power dynamic. Food played a significant role in the power dynamics of a men's regime. The dictator's love for grand meals and his interaction with this chef were a microcosm of his broader approach to governance. A man used food as a tool to assert his dominance, both in terms of lavishness of his dishes and the control he exerted over those who prepared them. The chef's ability to influence a man's mood through food highlight the complex interplay between the power and the culinary artistry. While a man meals were a source of personal enjoyment, they also served as a means for chef to navigate the treacherous waters of regime. The power the power this chef wielded in the kitchen was a subtle yet significant counterbalance to a main authority, demonstrating that even in a dictatorship, influence could come from unexpected places. Conclusion Idi Amin culinary preferences and the stories of the chef who cooked for him offer a unique lens through which we view his larger than life persona and the intricacy of his regime. From the professional pride of Chef, like Odea, to the coerced compl compliance of others, the kitchen was a stage where power dynamic played out in a subtle yet profound ways. I mean, love of traditional Uganda dishes, his hunting exploit, and his efforts to maintain his culinary connection in exile, all paint a picture of a man who, despite his brutal regime, remained deeply tied to his cultural roots and places of food. This narrative not only humanized a notorious figure but also underscored the universal significance of food as a connector of past and present, power and vulnerability, pride and survival. In the end, the story of Vida Min's favorite meal is as much about the man himself as it about the resilience and creativity of those who cooked for him, turning culinary, culinary hearts into a means of navigating the complexity of life under the dictatorship. Thank you very much.